Is there a wrong way to keep and store your edged weapons? Let's talk about that. Hi, my name is Matt. Thanks for being here. So the question is, is there a right way and a wrong way to keep your edged weapons, your swords, daggers, sharp things safe? Well, historically speaking, there would have been several options available to you for longer term storage. Now, depending on your status and where you lived, for instance, if you were a knight, you may have had access to an armory. Within the walls of a town or a castle, there may be a room or a larger structure, either attached or freestanding, that would store lances and swords and shields and various other accoutrements. And it could sometimes accommodate other larger items, like the component parts of siege weapons. It would typically be guarded, and in times of need, such as during an attack on the town or castle, it would provide the weapons necessary for defense for mounted knights, for example. The armory was essentially a semi-long-term secure storage house for surplus weapons and perhaps armor and specialized weaponry like pole arms. So it's kind of unlikely that an everyday item such as your arming sword would be kept there. Most likely, if it wasn't strapped to your side, you would have kept it in the scabbard in a safe place. Or if it was a very fine piece of workmanship, you may have stored it for short periods, oiled and wrapped in a piece of cloth. Generally, weapons like arming swords and daggers would be carried with you on your body or stored relatively close by. But you could have various weapons, a variety, and uh, could have more than one sword. For a knight in particular, um, you could, of course, buy additional weapons, but you could also win them in tournaments or course in battle. These additional pieces would have either been sold for their value, kept perhaps as trophies, or replaced whatever the knight had been using up to that point. In the case where there existed a surplus, more than one man needs or could use, it seems that additional pieces would likely have been placed in a storeroom, if not an armory. I also want to mention this popular idea, you see it everywhere, it's ubiquitous in movies set in the medieval period, where you have swords and other weapons and they're displayed as as art, I guess. And uh, often you'll see them placed right over this uh, roaring fire. And, and nowadays we do that. You have the mantle and it's perfect for displaying whatever you have that's most impressive. When I was growing up, I think we had a clock on ours, but it's a great place to display your sword nowadays. Um, and it's a focal point of the room. So when somebody walks in, uh, they see that and it sort of like conveys strength or something. If you have a sword collection, there's a good chance that you have a few favorites hanging on the wall. Almost every enthusiast does. And you've likely heard of a wall hanger too. It's kind of a pejorative. Usually due to their construction, this is the only function that that kind of sword can perform. But the notion that sword owners during the medieval period were hanging their weapons over the fireplace hearth seems really unlikely. For one thing, the typical shape of the hearth with its sloping hood simply doesn't lend itself to easily accommodating much of anything that's supposed to rest there. But we still, for some reason, see it in the movies. Like in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, when Robin of Loxley's father is sitting there writing a letter and uh, Alan Rickman comes with his band of men on horses wearing masks and they draw um, Mr. Loxley out of the castle and he gets up from his seat and he goes over to the hearth where there's, there's a fire there and he grabs that big giant two-handed sword uh, from above the fire. Or like um, season six, episode six of Game of Thrones when Samuel Tarley decides to finally leave his father's estate. He's gonna take Gilly with him and he uh, he makes his way to the, it's like this carved chest, this armoire or something, and he climbs up it and he grabs Heartsbane off of it and uh, you know, this 500 year old sword. I should do like a video on longevity of swords. But he grabs the sword down and he takes it with him. He snatches the sword. If you were wondering, I had some movie clips lined up to illustrate my point, but then I got worried about copyright issues and channel strikes. <sighs> it's just not worth it. So what are the best ways to keep your sword in shape over time? That's the question that no one has asked, and yet I am willing to answer. I've been interested in caring for my sword collection since at least this picture of me, circa 1982. So here is the practical wisdom that I've acquired in my four plus decades of life. Just three key points. Number one, keep the blade visible. What I mean by that is that you can't see corrosion happening if your highly valued sword is locked away in a case, 
a windowless cabinet, or even a well-crafted scabbard. Gun cases and scabbards seem like really good options, but are they? Not too long ago, I took a break from building a scabbard. I had constructed a wooden poplar core, and everything fit really well. Uh, and the demands of life required that I set the project aside for a few days. Well, days turned into weeks, and I had set the sword, which was snugly in the scabbard, on top of a first-floor bookcase, safe from the hands of curious children, and I left it there. All summer. Our air is on 24-7, and it never seemed particularly humid inside, but actually quite cool. When I found time to continue working on the scabbard, to my absolute horror, I found a significant amount of corrosion on the blade. I had oiled it and assumed that it would be perfectly protected, but I just had not checked on it. And because I couldn't see it, I was completely ignorant of the damage that was occurring. Alright, key point number two. Check the blade monthly, at a minimum. If your collection is hanging somewhere, on a wall, on a rack, it really doesn't matter. They're easy to quickly and frequently examine. It may seem like a pain, but it's the cost of owning something that you care about. And number three, understand your environment and how it's going to potentially impact your prize collection. If you live where high humidity is the norm or on the coast where salt from the ocean is everywhere, understand that you may have to do more to keep your stuff safe. Oil is the key here, and I've got to say, in my opinion, they're not all the same. Some oils will dry and look like maple syrup. Some oils smell so terrible that I can't stand to use them. But I'm going to tell you what I use. Uh, I use... I think I've mentioned these before, uh, Break Free CLP. It's a moderately thin, pale yellow oil that doesn't have a strong odor. Given enough time, it may dry, but I've never experienced that before. For lightly touching up scuffs and marks, gray scotch bright ultra fine pads work really well. And if your sword handle is covered in leather and it needs a little refresh, you can use Tree Wax. It's a clear paste wax product. It's solid. So that's it. My best advice I can give to you about successfully keeping your treasured edged weapons in good shape. Still working on the Viking scabbard build behind the scenes, so thanks as always for your patience. If you haven't seen part one, you can catch it now if you want. Thanks to those who have supported the channel through Patreon. Can't thank you enough for the encouragement. Until we do this again, guys. Ciao.